I'm just going to keep driving my phone in. Hello, now we're live. Whoa! Oh, now hey! we're live. What's up? Hey everyone, I'm Georgia. I'm the channel manager at Soul Pancake. And I'm Zach. I'm the channel manager at Soul Pancake. <laughs> No, you're not. Oh, darn it. You're not just those five already. Take two. I also <laughs> have a little faith on uh, Soul Pancake. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, we are here. Uh, send us your questions for Zach. I hope everyone can hear us. We're using a new mic because that was something that you requested last live show, so we're doing our best. We're still working on the camera, but hopefully this is a good start and that you guys can hear us and see us well because Zach looks awesome. Yeah, and you know what? Quit complaining, it's free. You guys are like, what, what, what cameras did you, you haven't responded with your own videos. Do you know so. what? Before I, we even started the live show, there was two dislikes on the video. What? <laughs> you don't, what, what do you want? What do you need to do for you people? I know, I know. They're, they're, they're pissed off out there in the audience. No, they're not. I think they're happy. No, most of them are. Yeah, it's May. Most of them. Can you imagine? It's May already? It's May. The already. last time we did the live show was November. Oh, yeah. well, the last time I did the last show. Yeah. Remember. Well, yeah. no, like the two of us together. Two, well, yeah. I, the people have been clamoring for, to see our chemistry. I know, they have been. They have been. They have been. Um, we uh, send us your questions. We have lots of, you know, we have a, Zach for the whole hour. I can hopefully. answer your entire, he, like, <laughs> any question you have about any subject whatsoever. Exactly, unless he, unless he decides to leave in the middle, which he could, if you write mean uh, things in the maybe. comments, which is possible. We'll see. I'll read all the mean comments. Yeah. Um, well, really quickly, you guys, you're awesome. Um, it's been a really exciting, busy month here at Soul Pancake. We just posted some really cool videos this week. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Is it? Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. I, uh, you're all appreciated. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. What are you? Exactly. We did a video with Edutopia and the George, uh, who's uh, the George Lucas Foundation, to make a video celebrating teachers that you can watch on our channel. We posted that on Saturday, um, so you should check it out and send it to your favorite teacher because there are so many amazing teachers out there that deserve to be appreciated this week. Um, they deserve to be appreciated all the time. Who is, uh, the, you should put a question out as to what was their best teacher experience. Yeah. Who was the teacher that meant something to you guys? Yeah. Guys? That's it. Yeah. That's listen to him. He knows YouTube. Like what? You yeah. Know, yeah. Just, just post that those long like stories in the comments. Yeah. Tell us about it. Um, yeah. So we did that. We also uh, posted a really incredible video on Monday, uh, the one year later Zach Soviak video uh, following up um, his story. So that's a really beautiful, amazing video. Please watch that as well. Um, what else do we have going on? We have new episodes of Have a Little Faith coming yeah, out have, next week. Yeah, the new episode next week, I'm really um, pretty pumped about it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I think Hinduism is next week. Yep. And uh, and we had a great experience. I went to the the college campus at USC. Uh -huh. It was always intimidating for me because it was like finals week, oh, and you could, yeah, there was like that stress in the air of like everybody's like almost done. Yeah. And there's like all this work you got to do. Yeah. And like I didn't even have it. And I felt the level of stress just raised, and I was like, Yeah. Uh, People uh, like stressing out. They have stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's like in their sweatpants. Yeah. You know, yeah. Was like it was really. I I never graduated yeah. college, so that that uh, just having that feeling again. Yeah, you're terrifying. like, this is not, this is yeah, not this fun. Yeah, this is not for me. Finals are the worst, too, because I feel like you finish and then you graduate or whatever, or you finish and you're like, I'm graduating, don't. or you don't graduate, but you, you know, like, somewhere ends and it's like, done the classes, and then it's like, those three papers that you still didn't turn in, yeah. you have to go home and like, write them all so, out. And there's always the thing everyone else is done with their work, yeah. and like, on to somebody, yeah, yeah. and like, I've got four papers. Left. Yeah, exactly. And your teacher's like, you just really should have turned that in like three weeks ago. And you're yeah. Like, ah. So I think what we just both admitted on the, on the live stream is that we were both horrible students. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually, yeah, I really, I would say that, that college was better for me, but high school was tough. Like, I was not... I was not that good, you know? No, I'm not. I was never good in the educational system. Yeah. That's a horrible thing to admit during yeah. like teacher appreciation week. But I, I never, yeah. I, I never worked out. But I had some amazing teachers. I definitely did. Who yeah. was the best, best one? 
Oh, I had this one teacher, George Stoney, um, who unfortunately he passed away last year, but he's an amazing documentary filmmaker. Um, oh, wow. Really, really just taught me so much about telling people's stories and like interviewing people and all of those things. Yeah. I know. So that was kind of what brought you here. Part of it, yeah, definitely yeah. part of it. Do you have a favorite teacher? I have several favorite teachers. Uh, like I, I had some really cool teachers because I was always one of those students where I was like, I'm going to break down the barrier of the, the structure of what the teacher-student relationship is yeah. supposed to be and just be friendly with these people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, like, there was a, uh, Mrs. Horvatis uh -huh. in, in, with my eighth grade uh Social studies teacher. Mr. Mrs. Horvatis. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and we used to we used to call like as like a little twelve year old or whatever. We would always call her like after school and like when we were doing like Friday night sleepovers or whatever. Yeah. We'd call and chat and then like what you, like we you call back, her on Friday. Call her on Friday night. And be like, hey, what's cracking, Mrs. Horvatis? And then like. <laughs> And then we would, you know, instead of going to lunch, we would go into her room and, then, and we would always pretend to like bring kids' movies in and then like five minutes in she'd realize we were watching Animal House. Yeah, yeah, of and, course. <laughs> and that was like, it was, it was great. And, and like a lot of teachers I've, I've kept up with and it's nice, with, like, because we, we had a few of those, uh, I don't know if it's the same for girls, but as young pubescent boys, there are some teachers that really just bring you into manhood. <laughs> and then when you're in your twenties, yeah, and, and you realize, oh, this person is, is still hot. Yeah. And I can talk to them on an adult level. Yeah, that's, no longer. That's just a new that's level. A, that's, that's a weird. A, that's a different type of teacher appreciation. Yeah. That it doesn't get its own week. That is a very that is a very good point. I think you also forget like how young a lot of the teachers are. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, like when you're in high school, you're like they're so old, but some of them are really like in their twenties. Some of them or, are like twenty three. Yeah, and then, yeah, and, and then it just you know, and you go back and you're like, do I have a shot with this person? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do it's I all, want? It's always a no. Yeah. The question is, would you really ever it's, want to go back and like date yeah, your high school yeah, teacher? Like, yeah, I don't. Yes. I guess it's different for some people than others. Yeah. Um, um, guys, if you're just tuning in, I'm here with Zach Anner. We are answering all of your burning questions live on air. So now's your chance. I can put Zach through the ringer for about an hour, and then that's it. So send us your questions. Um, I could stay all night. Yeah, exactly. I could stay all night. We could go live all day. That's possible too. You know what I mean? You want. I don't care. <laughs> um, the first thing that I actually just wanted to give a shout out to Philip Gibson, who asked, "How's everything going on in your life, Zach?" Everything is going great. I mean, it's really fantastic. Um, life is going well, and then like my own YouTube channel is kind of taking yeah. off. Yeah. Like uh, generally, I make videos and no nobody watches them really. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a bunch of people started watching them. Are you going to get too cool for us? No! I was, I was, I was, I was actually, this was going to take place off camera, but basically what I want to say to you is I will do anything to remain part of the uh, Soul of Pancake family. Well, you are a part of the Soul Pancake family. It's, it's the best place to, to uh, come, to the energy here is always so good. Yeah. Just, I don't know if it's the post-it notes or the people or equal parts, but this is just this is really where it's at. Yeah, thank you, thank you for saying so, that. So, um, yeah, and like you know, other things in life, I'm, I'm gonna be a, a best man in a wedding. No way! Summer. Who's yeah. wedding? Uh, my um, one of my best friends. Wow. Uh, Kevin. And he, not just like some random. No, way. not just some random. Well, I do get random requests for that too. You like, should. I feel like you'd be really good at officiating a wedding. Like you should get your officiating. Oh, like go online and get yeah, my you can do that. Yeah, you yeah. Would be great. Like I would. I, that would be. You well, would be good at that. okay. I don't know where you're at in your, your relationship. No, there, not getting but, married any But I, I, if I do this, then then I would say that I would like to to officiate your your okay. uh, nuptials. Okay, all right. I have no plans for nuptials, but well, well if I ever do one, day, let's hurry do. this along. <laughs> We're not spending fifty dollars on an online certificate for nothing. That's a good point. That's a very good point. 
That's so, a good all right. So uh, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be the one that, that whenever you find the one for you, I'm gonna be the one in the middle, <laughs> making it all official. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I believe in the one, but we'll see. That's a whole nother. What? That's the whole what? Nother what? Nother the show the, the the woman who runs the channel <laughs> that has the science of love on it. But the whole point of that show is that we're disproving the, the idea that there's of, just one soulmate. Wait a minute. The whole point of that show is not to... Well, I wouldn't say that that... I didn't get that from it. I got that everything is very hopeful. I no, no, know. everything is very hopeful, but it's the idea that like, if you're in a relationship and you believe that, that, um, that one person is going to satisfy all of your needs, and that you're not going to ever have any problems. So what you're saying is you'd like to have multiple husbands. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. I understand. Now we're good. I understand. We would try to explore that. Yeah, yeah. Thing. And it was fine. Um, okay. Well, we have some some questions for you that we've already gotten. Oh, all right. From, like, Twitter, which is this social network. I, I, I don't know about Twitter. You don't know about Twitter? Um, Sure. Oh, another question I have before okay. we get started okay. on the actual legitimate question. Okay. Is I saw that the, the James Franco was tweeting the new new self self. Oh, I saw that too. I heard and about that. I was one because I I think I tweeted something. Whereas if I did it, I yeah. think if I tweeted new new <laughs> self, I would be considered brave because I have the cerebral. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think people would call me brave. And bold for doing it. Yeah. I will, I just had a question for you. Okay. If I tweeted new selfies of, of myself, yeah. Would, would, would I it? lose my job? No. Okay. No. All right. Absolutely not. Because I might be in the cards then. Okay. And let me know if you think that's a great idea. I'll check in with. The, I'll regroup about that one with the team. Okay. I'll just. I'll regroup right. on it. I'm I'm ready, ready to I am ready. I am ready for your your serious question. Okay. Tracy Davis says, what can we do to stay positive? Uh, Other than tweet. Basically, what I, I think you do to stay positive is you really think about everything that has brought you to this moment that makes you lucky. Because yeah. like, uh, the, the majority of us, the, be, the vast majority of everyone, is incredibly lucky and fortunate. Mm -hmm. And... and the fact that we are here and the fact that you are able to ask that question on Twitter and, and you know, you live in a world where that's possible and we can all stay connected. Everything in this world is an opportunity. And I think it's easy to get bogged down in the little things that, that drive us nuts. Yeah. But then when you really stop to take a look at it, most of us are doing pretty well. Yeah. And, and if you don't get so caught up in the, the little uh, minutia of, of daily life of like, ah, oh, man, traffic, ah, oh, man, phone broke, like, it's just, yeah. Like, but look at, look at everything. The fact that, that we live in this time and that everything is a possibility is pretty awesome. So I try, I try and remind myself when I'm feeling, because sometimes I turn into a little negative Nancy, little negative Nancy. <laughs> even I do, yeah. and then it's like, wait a minute, I'm I, I'm in Los Angeles. It's sunny all the time. Yeah, I get like I can't walk, but I got this great scooter. Yeah, but like if I was in the 1800s, I would like either be in like a wicker chair with tiny little <laughs> wheels and stay upstairs all the time, yeah. or like uh, and. Now, now is now is the time where everybody has the opportunity to to, to make big strides. Yeah. Almost everybody. Yeah. And those that don't, you know, the rest of us should be working to help those people get there. So get, get out of our own heads about it and see what what other people need. Absolutely. That's awesome. I that's a great answer. You won the first one. Oh good. <laughs> I don't know what you won, but we'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> Um, at uh, Rara Embol, is it possible to keep being nice to people who are annoying and disrespectful to us? It's possible, but I don't know if you. Well, that's, a, that's always a tough one. Yeah. Because there are there are societal things, and then people have 
different roles, and yeah. sometimes you need them for stuff, and they're kind of <laughs> douchebags at the same time. But what I would do, um, what I've found is that when you hold that stuff in and you uh, you don't confront it, then uh, eventually it gets to a point where you're so pissed off that it blows up. And if you address those things when you're calm and collected and can really express yourself, then sometimes it doesn't get to the point where you're throwing a chair at somebody. Yeah, totally. And that's, that's key. And if you need to have somebody, sometimes, sometimes members of your family are complete douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't really... I eliminate them. Why'd you just turn your, you're like looking over and no, over there, I'm just kidding. No, it's not even, like, yeah. like sometimes, I have a great, I can't think of anyone in particular, but I know some people with families that are just jerks sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing you can well, do. We can all be jerks sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah. You I know, don't think you can really do I, I can definitely I've never be. seen you, that is just, what have what you not <laughs> had a smile on your face? Well, a, but you you see how you're fighting it? Just, you can only take it was like three seconds you can actually. Um, play. but you yeah. know most people have I have their temperamental times, and so it's best when you can communicate on a level that doesn't come from anger or totally, anger. totally. Um, oh, let's uh, we're gonna lose our battery. Are we? <laughs> oh, dun dun dun. Oh, we're live and this is awkward. Keep them interested. All right, guys. So I am. I cannot see any of your. Are we? We're still stuck. Hold on. Well, well I'll just drink water. <laughs> um, isn't drinking water fun? Momentary. No reason to be. You know. Not happy when we have drinkable water. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, and I think I think just going off of what you're saying, I totally agree because you end up having to hold on to that yeah. anger more. So, like, I, I always kind of have to judge myself on if I'm so angry at somebody that it's affecting my day, yeah. but not like I'm not saying anything to them about it. Then I think you have a problem because you don't want it to like hurt yeah, you. Yeah, you know? and then normally when you actually are able to to have an intelligent conversation with somebody and, and, and not come from a place of judgment yeah. and anger. Like, most people get that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I agree. Okay. All right, guys. We're live with, with Zach Anner. That's his name. Yeah. And if you're just driving in, you should send us your questions. Write them in the comments. Tweet them. Send us a message on MySpace, Zanga. On MySpace? I don't know. I just like, got, yeah. Just, uh, you know, if you to have your uh, Friendster account. Yeah. <laughs> if you, did you have a Zanga? No. Well, I had a Zanga and a live journal. Yeah, what did you write about? Really can angsty you, teen stuff. Can you go back Extremely, to Extremely. I'm so it. happy that I can't go back to it. That's okay. all I'm saying. So if I, sir, if I did some real digging. It's right. all under a fake name, probably. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not available. Yeah, yeah. Next question. Let's see. Right, let's ben Seaman. What's the biggest difference among the religions you've interviewed? Good question. The biggest difference? Yeah. Uh, I think the, hmm, the biggest difference among all of them. I guess, the, I mean, the way they practice is all radically different, mm -hmm. um, but the messages are all the, they're pretty much, there are some universal things mm -hmm. about all of them. So I, you can go, um, the way people worship and the way people connect with either, you know, their spirituality or, or God or whatever they call it is, is is very unique, and the way that we've explored it, it's a very personal thing. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, just the core beliefs of what's important, what it takes to be a good human being and, and be connected with the world, I've found, is pretty similar yeah. among most of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like that's something that we've all felt working on the show, that there's more similarities among all of the faiths. Then there are differences. Yeah, in a lot of ways. I would know? say I would say from my experience, from my my little sliver of experience, 
uh, Catholics have the most kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That one. was a big one. Yeah. That was, you know, I don't. We had some experience. You know, Mendy's got three, but mm -hmm. then I, I've never experienced so many. So kids many in kids. One, yeah. One space. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of kids in yeah. that playground. They yeah. were really cute, though. Yeah, adorable. Yeah. All adorable. And then you All start. All good-looking kids. You start getting into the thing like, oh well, maybe it would be nice to have that many. It's like I'm not ready for yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not ready for like a. I'm still not ready for a hamster. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! No. Yeah, hamsters. Like if that's like you gotta like feed that every day. Yeah, and I yeah. got so then getting to that is like I mean there's not a single plant that yeah. won't die. No, if, if, no matter what I do. Bless you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, Jesse as uh, Jesse as Jesse Z Mika said on Twitter, "What is sacred to you?" Hmm. That is a good question. I was not expecting that. Uh, what is sacred to me? I think, I think family, um, and particularly, you know, spending time with those you love and letting them know how much you care about them is is a sacred thing. Because I think if you don't do that, if you get caught up and and just like everyday life and you forget to, to take a moment to, to acknowledge the people that you care about and then mm -hmm. something happens then you know that that's kind of that that would be a big regret yeah I've, I've now caught on my own look it oh, I no. can't even now I'm stuck <laughs> uh, wait, here we go um, so anyway yeah, that. Yeah, um, and, family, and I agree. I, I don't know what else. I mean, I'm still searching for the sacred things. And I think I I have learned through Have a Little Faith that if something else is, is sacred to another person, that you need to take that seriously and, and respect that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it is... Are um, it's the instinct to uh, if something is different than what we've come to know, to sort of dismiss it or or not take it as seriously. But I, I what I try to do on the show is just be like, okay, let's let's say that these beliefs because that of the level of importance they hold in these people's lives are are equally valid. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. So that's important too. Yeah, absolutely. We're always, I think we're always really quick to jump to the negative side of something. Like in any situation, we're always, there's always more problems than there are solutions to a problem. We're always more likely to, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're uh, basically, uh, we're conditioned by this society to be Judgmental, yeah. kind of negative people. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of snark going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. A Especially on the internet. You know, it's like those. You know. So and you know that, that that's how I am normally too. We're all kind of that way, and and really through the process of making this show, it has allowed me to be. Less snarky and more compact. Yeah. Which that's has been awesome. really nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. There's yeah. Cool. Guys, send us your questions, more questions. We want how more is questions. The mic turn, how do you like this mic that we went out and got special? Look at this. This is a special mic. I'm scared if I touch it, like something's gonna happen. There's tape on the back to make sure our connection's good, you know. We're uh we're on yeah, Ethernet yeah. today. We're like plugged in hardwire. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. You know? you're really, you're Just want to make sure everybody could get all your. I could get. They could get all the pixels possible. So yeah. you guys, you you treat this you treat this live stream with respect. Of course, of course I do. This is you know this is what I got. This is you know we have. I really do believe, and well, I'm obviously a little bit biased. But we have the most awesome audience at Soul Pancake. Like, actually, Philip, uh, who I mentioned earlier, who asked a question, like he is amazing. And shout out to him. He comments on our videos almost every day, and I feel so I connected. Do I don't even do that. Yeah, I feel so connected to because 
you know, I think when you work in YouTube and you work on the internet, like you get so used to just like reading messages from people and doing emails all day. And at the end of the day, when I can just take a minute to read through the comments and see what people have said about your show or Science of Love or whatever, you know, message to Kid President, that is like that fills my heart with so much joy. You know. So you are actually you have one of the few jobs where it, you can actually just watch YouTube all day, and that's part of... I watch a lot of YouTube throughout the day, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and just, like, respond to Facebook comments. <laughs> I respond to someone else. Well, yeah, I respond to YouTube comments a lot. Oh, yeah, okay. I try to, you know? And then the, 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 thing, the soul pancake Facebook, is that somebody else? Well, Catherine, you know, who's done the live show with me before. And who's I awesome. know Catherine. You know Catherine. Catherine. I know she's out of town. We miss what? her. I know, I know. It's really... Usually she's here, and that just means so much. But okay, send us your questions, guys. Oh, this is a great question from Jacob. Why does your yarmulke have a zipper? Uh, I was filming. Okay, first of all, this takes a little explanation. Okay, give us the. I'm not. Start. I'm not uh, actually Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, was filming. Uh, I do a show over on my channel called Workout Wednesday, and so. What we were doing is because we we did an episode of Heaven Will Faith on uh, Hasidic Jews, and the the um, Jewish guy we talked to, his name is Mindy. He designed these yarmulkes. I remember that from the episode. Oh, oh, it's still stuck <laughs> in my head. I'm gonna show it. But basically, you can undip the. If you had watched the Have a Little Faith episode, you would have seen that. Exactly, exactly. You should watch the episode. So but they're pretty rad. You can unzip them and make the, like, mix and match have different yeah. colors and stuff. But you can't wear, like, half a yarmulke. Okay. It's not like, I'm feeling half a yarmulke. You could. You could if you were, like, in the conversion. Yeah, you're like, I'm not sure. I'll wear half I a yarmulke. see how it feels to wear a hat. Yeah. Um, well, they're really rad, and you should check out Mendy's channel, and if you haven't seen Workout Wednesday, it's obviously one of the best shows on the internet. I don't right know now. if that's true. But I mean... It's all right. It's all right for an internet show. Yeah, you know, for a web series or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like the word web series. I don't like it. It's I, taken on a negative connotation, right? Well, yeah, because there's no difference between, I think, what people, like, the, the awesome videos that go on YouTube and the awesome videos that go on TV and the well, awesome videos that not, go on, you not know. From from you guys. Yeah. I think you kind of elevated the bar to like web television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank and then, you. And then, uh, but I would say that web series itself, because of the volume yeah. of waiters that I've had that are working on or up for a role in a web, web series, yeah. Like, yeah. it has taken on this sort of uh, different. Tone. Yeah. So we're, you should come up with a new word. No, we should. I mean, I just think it's like great videos. Good videos are good videos, right? It should be called web cinema. Web cinema. That is perfect. Web cinema. I love it. It's what it is. All right, we got more questions. Let's see what else we got. We did this one. Did I already ask you? No. Um, why do we need religions to believe in God? Uh, or do we? I, I don't think you do. I mean, I think, um, I think religion provides a structure to mm -hmm. worship God if that's what you need. But I, I don't think you, you necessarily need to practice a religion to believe in a higher power. Yeah. Uh, so you don't. I guess that's my uh, unprofessional opinion. Yeah, well, you're. I think you're. You're kind of a professional in the matter now. Well, okay. Do you believe in God? Going off of that. Do I is this from Nadia Lynch? Oh gosh, that is always. I believe in. Ah, and I hate the word spirituality because it's taken on. Like basically, all that means, I think. Is that you are not committal because you can't. You can't really. We can't really know anything mm -hmm. if there is or there isn't. There, there. That's where faith comes in. It's, okay, so I, I don't know based on evidence. Yeah. Um, and so I personally, I am open to the idea of God mm -hmm. and. 
religion, but I can't say for certain. And I think like the purpose of life is to go through and, and try and answer, you know, what is the purpose that I'm here for and then what what what's next? Mm -hmm. And uh, what and I think the the conclusion that we all should draw is that regardless of whether there's a God or an afterlife, uh, that we should be making the most of this life. Yeah. And and I wish that I could give you like yes or no, but I really can't. Like and, and I think my life is just exploring things and being open to things and and, and really opening my heart to any possibility and, and hopefully, you know, by the end of it I'll be like, oh, this kind of makes sense. Yeah. Or or I won't. Yeah. Like, we'll see. like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. There's but a lot of beauty I, in I will question. keep you po posted. Keep, uh, yeah, keep this. us posted. Yeah, keep us posted. Thanks for your questions, you guys. Send us any other questions you have. Um, we are obviously live from the Soul Pancake office. Got the post-it wall, got Zach, got the rooster behind him. KP Seal is hanging out in the office. It's yep. kind of a big deal. Wow. Um, I think we've just described the entire room. Yeah, we. I was just, in case they couldn't see, I just wanted to make sure that it was. Well, I mean, is everybody getting the video out there? <laughs> Everyone's getting the video. Okay. Um, okay, we just got a question from Ethan Hardwick. What are the coolest things you have ever experienced on uh, well, um, there are so many. Um, one, I, I'll, I'll try and give you three because there are so many that are just kind of crazy mm -hmm. cool. Um, but I'll say uh, that from season one, there was, uh, you know, Joe the Quaker that we talked to, um, you know, passed away, I think. Uh, just as our second sort of ancillary piece with, with him was, had gone up mm -hmm. and, and we had talked about the school that he started in Afghanistan for girls um, and then we, we got an email that he, he really appreciated that we had sort of focused on that and then was in a week he had died. Um, and just to get to hear his story of you know, love and loss, and get to be able to share that time with him because he had just lost his uh, husband. And, and when we talked to him, and then um, when we went to the Quaker meeting that day, people had told me that that he had been in a really, really bad way. You know, since he had lost his husband, and and that that day was a really good day for him. Yeah. And so. To, to be able to have our paths cross like that and to, for him to share that story was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the coolest things to come out of it um, was when we did the when we did the reunion show, you know we, we had you know, one of Joe's friends and then we had every, everyone represented who was in season one and everyone got together and we just had a great time yeah. and, and a really, really honest discussion about serious stuff mm -hmm. and you know, Mormons, Quakers, Jews, uh, Baptists, Baha'is, all, every, everyone was represented and, and, and we, it really made me feel like we were doing good work. Yeah. Because not, I haven't, I hadn't seen anything like that, and it was just such a warm and open environment where I was just, I, it was like I was high fiving the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. So, yeah, that was really cool. And then uh, during the, we've talked about it a little bit, but during the uh, Catholic episode, the Catholicism episode like just seeing that amount of joy from those kids and running around with like 50 kids yeah. was amazing because yeah. yeah, you know even though I'm like probably I'm, I'm it's 
like I am, I feel right now like I'm at least like 60 years away from being ready. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like and just you know seeing that was was pretty you know incredible. Yeah. So there you go. Those Very are three, long winded. Those are three great ones. Those these, are three great ones. I um the the reunion episode was amazing. I mean I don't think I've ever been in a situation or seen a situation where so many people from different faiths were together and actually having a conversation about faith. Like, you just never yeah, see that. Yeah, and, and the, the idea that, 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 you know, uh, Quakers are singing, the, uh, the Quaker that was there, his name's Cody Rainbow, he started singing one of their old Quaker tunes, and then maybe the city Jews started playing bongos. Yeah. And, like, it was, it was just... Like one of those magical moments, like, yeah. and, and it was just a really great time. I yeah. hope we get to do it with some of the people from season two at some point. Yeah, that would be amazing. And if you haven't seen the reunion episode, you should definitely watch it. It was the first uh, video that we posted this kind of season two um, yeah. of Have a Little Faith. So. We got more questions. This one is from uh, Rasmus Elving. How do you find your motivation? That's an awesome question. Thank you. Uh, well, um, I'm, in, I'm an incredibly uh, fortunate guy, um, and when I put out videos and things, a lot of times they affect people in ways that I don't expect them to, and, you know, I, just this week I got a letter from somebody who said that my videos are helping them. They just, you know, they were addicted to um, drugs and, you know, substances, and, and that my videos are helping them get through the withdrawal and, like, getting off of that. And, like, I get messages like, messages like that uh, pretty frequently, and, and just reading those and reading the comments on the stuff that I do. It's like you put it. I generally tend to put things out there to to just you know maybe make people smile or like laugh and, mm -hmm. and the when you realize that it can have a semi life changing impact and that it really affects people in a positive way, it's like well that's that's motivation. Yeah. Um, and, and really, I, I have a job that is, is incredibly fun, so yeah. it doesn't take much to, to get me excited about what I'm doing, yeah. so I'm just pretty lucky. Definitely. So. It's, easy, it's easier to stay motivated when you're, when you're excited about what you're doing, I think. Um, okay, this is a fun one from Aisha John. Where is your dream destination for travel? Huh. Dream travel destination. Dream travel destination. Thank you for all your questions, well, by the way. I just wanted to say yes, that. Yes, thank you very much. Um, well, I'm actually uh, trying to get a European travel show today. No way. Uh huh. All right. And uh, that is because, um, like, when when I first started wanting to do travel shows, it was because we uh, I traveled to to. Rome with my dad and my brother, and just like getting on the trains, mm -hmm. and like everything was was beautiful, but also like really difficult in a fun way. Like yeah. There were entire cities that I couldn't get into. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm really uh, I want to show that side of travel and just have a great time doing it. Yeah. And, and I just read that that Berlin is the most accessible European travel like, really? travel city. So I want to check that out. Yeah. Even if, like in my brain, like when I think Berlin, I don't necessarily think like I tend to think of like leather jackets and, and like like designer drugs. Yeah. <laughs> like dirt, dirty. Why like like, like like electronic I'm, clubs I'm, or something? Yeah, like you know, like the, the whole like where people learn like have cyborg stuff. So obviously, I'm really uh, misinformed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I would love to experience it. That's awesome. Uh, so hopefully that happens. Yeah, those are really good ones. Well, if we have anyone out there who's from Berlin, maybe they can comment and tell us some good spots. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me know if I'm just completely way off base with all the. Yeah, all you, the know, you know, you know. Um, okay. 
We have a couple other ones. Let's see what some good ones. Do you like video games? This is from John Do I like Gio it? Giovanno. Yes! I love video games. Suck it that all. That is a yes. Suck that is a yes. I suck at every single video game there ever was. What's your favorite video game? Ah, uh, gosh. Uh, I think either... Uh, I, I would have to go with a, a, a Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh, that's a great one. That's Just a great the one. The original Nintendo. Mm -hmm. very, very, uh, because uh, I just, and I love watching like all the new games. I'm not, and you wouldn't expect this from me, but all, all of the, all of the violent, horrible stuff, yeah. I, I still enjoy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't play those games. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm like the backseat driver <laughs> of video games. Like, yeah, I will. Because I always, the, every single game I play, no matter how beautiful it yeah. is, whatever the setting is, I will always find the wall to walk into yeah. Yeah. and just be like in the corner walking into the wall and everyone else is off on the That's mission. how I feel when I'm playing like Gold, well, GoldenEye, which is old school, but like I just, I don't know, I just never could really... No, you can't. Like, I don't out. understand how you're supposed to yeah, aim No, no, I'm the same way. Where is like, I love Mario Party. That's like my favorite game. That's really fun. It's super easy though. It's just like do do do. You just go along, you know. Yes, the games that are for four year olds. Yeah, those are the ones that I really enjoy. Us. Um, oh, this is the one. This is from Tamerica, which is an amazing name. I just have to say. Tamerica. Tamerica. Yeah, not cool. Yeah, um, Tamerica. what do you do in your spare time? Uh, I. We're always coming up with with stuff that we want to film mm -hmm. and like things that we want to make. And then you know it, it's it's the spare time and the, the work just sort of blend together because what I like like to do for fun and what I get to do for work is the same thing. Yeah. And then it's just a lot of you know like seeing friends and like um, trying to figure out what the, the what the next thing to do is for fun. And yeah, work. coming on this old pancake live show. Coming you on know. this old pancake live show. Like, <laughs> that is a you know, highlight of the week. Mm -hmm. This old pancake live show. I, I want one of those beverages. I know I said. It. I told you that that was. These are so good. I don't know if anyone's ever had these. Are they these a are, they like ever, are they an official sponsor? Well, I wish they were. I really wish they were. I mean, we will accept all San Pellegrino. They, they're, it's good. We'll get you one of these. Well, you guys need to make it like a like a a more a less webcam plug for them. Then they'll, probably then they'll do it, so I shouldn't. Okay. I've, been, I've been pimping out Olive Garden. And you have? Single, and nothing's happened? Every single one of my videos, I talk about Olive Garden. Did they have it called? Nothing. Nothing. we got to get in touch with Olive Garden. That doesn't seem that crazy. Because you think that, that by now, because if you watch my videos, yeah. like it's literally, there's something about Olive Garden. Yeah. Know. yeah. You know, I'm the, I'm the have a little faith piece going up tomorrow. There's, there's an Olive Garden shout out in there. I, I managed to sneak it in and just in, a, in, a, in an assessment about my own life, I managed to make a, an Olive Garden metaphor. Yeah. So, you know, Does anyone work or know anyone that works at Olive Garden? That would be our start. Yes, I would be the perfect pitch man for that. Okay, perfect. That's good to know. Um, you guys, we're going to be live for 20 more minutes with Zach. Send us your questions. We really love to hear from you. You can send us comments too about the show. You know, I mean, anything. Just really. Anything. Let's chat. Just like, let's do this. You let's could talk. Send us sandwiches. You could send us sandwiches or Olive Garden references. We accept all of those things. Yes. Um, so I've got some more questions. Um, the Buffinator. Ah. Which I, makes me think that they're from Buffalo. Well, maybe. Or just really. Or really just really. In, I'm so, I'm oh, sorry. yeah, you were thinking like Buff and Nader, and I was thinking. Yeah, and you were thinking because the accent is just, it really just yeah. doesn't go away. Yeah. No, my roommates are both from Buffalo. So, and it's real. You know. it, it is a pretty I know about you guys. Talk. I know about it. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, but can you, do, can you make the Batman voice? Just the Batman voice. It's really just what it is is you just don't enunciate and okay. then you just like punish your throat. Okay. And it's just like it's 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 like it
<laughs> I have no idea what you just said. But no, you're like not it. supposed to. Oh, okay. The Christian girl set a precedent that you're not supposed to understand what Batman said. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I just uh, originally I was supposed to, but like when we were doing wheelchair Batman, uh -huh. I was like, I want to do it as as faithfully as possible okay. to the Batman voice. Yeah. And I was like, no, this is this is so ridiculous that all of you like this just deserves to be made fun of. Yeah. This is yeah. horrible. Yeah. Michael Keaton didn't make, need a Batman voice like that. Yeah. You think if you're gonna be a superhero that you just you're gonna need twelve lot lozenges all the time? Bro coat. You got like the spray or something. I can only do the voice for about about five minutes. And then it's or, then you lose it. Uh, Aspen Edgewalker wants to know if you've ever met Shay Carl. No. No. I, I know. Him, I know he's a YouTuber or something. He's an amazing YouTuber family. Is he really, yeah, are yeah. They, they're really are they good? Because I'm great. not. I'm not Carl. I'm, I'm going to the VidCon this year. I'm going to the VidCon too. So, I, I'm, so <laughs> what is my the first VidCon? time at the VidCon. <laughs> what is? It's the VidCon. I'm going. I, I think it's the VidCon. Let's hang out over there. All right. So the VidCon, if you don't know, I went for about 20 minutes last year. Yeah, it's, it's intense. And what it is is, is every YouTuber comes to Anaheim, California, and then they are swarmed by the 12-year-olds that adore them. Yep. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing there because I do I have 12-year-old fans? Because that's the only only people that go. Well, I'm going. I'm not 12. Well, it's you and and 9,000 <laughs> 12 year olds. Um, no, they have really fun like stands that you can go to and take photos and you know. Take photos with all your. Who's your favorite YouTuber? Don't say a soul pancake person. Maybe you you have to make it separate. Make it separate. I mean, I. I love the Vlog Brothers. Like they're some of my favorites. I also love Magic of Rahat. I love prank videos. Um, yeah, so I, I love that stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then there's also like some other people that I follow that I like a lot. But I like a lot of a lot of people. You like a lot of stuff. I like a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, we got another question from King Narwhal. Would you ever write a book about your life? Life lessons. I am writing a book about my life at the, at the moment. Like we're trying to get the proposal out with all the shampoo stores and stuff Amazing. in the next three weeks. And like it's I, it's a difficult thing because we've it's been on the table for like years now. Yeah. And I realize that I prefer rather than, you know, writing very polished, lovely prose, that I just prefer to sit in front of the webcam and ramble. Uh-huh. Have that be the way that I communicate. Yeah. So the thing is, you gotta. That can't just be a book, or else, it's like one of those. It's one of those snooky books. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. nobody, re nobody yeah. really wants yeah. to read that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we're trying to make something that, that's really kind of cool and funny, and uh, has stories from my life. That's awesome. That's so. That awesome. turned into a very, like, unintentional. Large I was just gonna say, did you pay the, the guy? No, but, but that's amazing. That's that's amazing. I'm I'm excited to read it. Well, you can you can read whatever you want. I'll yeah. Send, I'll send it to you. Early. Yeah, please I, do. I'll I'll do I'll I'll tell you what I think. Um, uh, we have like 15 more minutes of questions. Send us your questions or your comments. Zach is here. So, um, Bianca says, how did you get started on YouTube? Uh, how did I get? We uploaded a video. Um, like, Whoa! Uh, well, here's the, here's how uh, my YouTube thing got started. Originally, uh, when I was back in college, they were like, "Oh, now you can upload videos to websites." And we thought, "Okay, we'll, we'll upload our videos to to, to MySpace because this YouTube thing." <laughs> This YouTube thing is probably not going to be around very long. <laughs> so that's where all of the original stuff went. I think it was around 2007 or so that we started uploading stuff to the official uh -huh. YouTube. And that, 
And now it's way different than it was then. Do you remember yeah. you could only do like a hundred minutes? Yeah. And remember the starring system? I love the starring <laughs> system. It was like it was a little more accurate. Yeah. Than like or dislike. Well, as I said earlier, people like like dislike the video before you you even start. Yeah. It. And it's like that, that. That always ends up too. It's like and there's comments on the video before the video. And yeah, it's like first you're first, a jerk. First, like, <laughs> like, Love you. It's like you actually love this. You watch it first. It might be horrible. Yeah. And if it's horrible, you should let me know and not just blindly like everything. Well, that's a good point. I was gonna say that I would at least prefer. I would prefer to have if they were gonna comment early to comment early on that they loved it as opposed to like. No, I mean it. If, if it sucks in the first five seconds, that that I understand, but you can't really say you love something. Yeah, before. no, that's very true yeah. until you've seen it exactly. Um, we got another question from Mr. Magma. There's two questions from Mr. Magma. That's a cool username, um, and we're gonna hit both of them. Well, first one is, both. where were your relatives originally from? They're originally from Buffalo, New York, which is where I get this. this <laughs> Do you like the bill? Oh gosh, that's a hard one because they're a hard team to like. Yeah. They're kind of like, yeah. like they're they're the, the, they're like the, the cousin that always keeps screwing up and getting into trouble. Yeah. Like, oh, I chose that. Then they get arrested again. Oh, the bills they they just like they always find a way to whatever. They're doing. Even when they win games, they they make it. They they let you know that yeah. this is just this is just a one-time thing. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good um, point. So that's a tough one. And then like just being from from Buffalo, I'm I'm excited to go back there because it is it has amazing food and not like not like in a fancy way. No, like, it's like really amazing. It's just like, and yeah. And it's like you're gonna that is the place to go if you wanna be happy and unhealthy during the summer. Yep, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's awesome. So the but, other question is from Mr. Magma is who is the most famous person you have met? I guess uh, let's see. It's either Bill Clinton or Oprah. You met Bill Clinton? Yeah, well, I shouted at him. Oh, yeah. I shouted at him, and he responded politely. That's an excellent question. Who is more famous, Bill Clinton or Oprah? I don't know. Like, they're, they're, like, they're, like, right there on the same. They're, they're, like, yeah. they're, like, hanging out at that same top level. Yeah. I, yeah, believe it or not, I have not met Rain Wilson. You haven't met Rain no. Wilson in person? No. We talked on the phone once. Yeah. Now I work for him. Never met him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, because if I had met him, I would have to. I would have to. He would be him. the one. I would have to. I would have to say that. When I, yeah. For, well, well, you know. You for purposes. You know, he already loves you, so you don't need to worry about that. That's the that's the good news. Um, oh, Daniel T just asked, "Are you going to shoot in Austin again?" Um, well, I will be in Austin this September, and I think we'll probably shoot some stuff. Cool. Um, it's like, do I, whenever I go back there, you, you just you never have a place where you go and you, you're hanging out with your friends, and then you're like, "Ah, oh, man." I wish I could stay here. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, well, when I was living here, it's like, it's because I'm visiting that yeah. these people actually want to hang out with me <laughs> as much. Because when I lived here, I was not nearly this popular. Yeah. That's that. I mean, but I am looking forward to going and, and then having people make it seem like they really want to spend time. Yeah, with me. yeah. Austin is great. Okay, so we have 10 more minutes, so I have a little game that I made up. That I want to do with you. Really? Yep. Okay. Um, we try to do some some sort of activity during the show. So I'm gonna spin through the book, soul pancake and then you're just, just this is a soul pancake. This I mean, is you're a soul just, pancake shirt. Oh yeah, that's a soul pancake shirt. That can be purchased at the soul pancake merch store. You know, that is an excellent. That is an excellent. I wear point. this shirt all the time. It's an extremely even, soft shirt. Admit it. When I'm not, when I'm like, I wear this shirt like probably. Like three times a week. Yeah, and it's a great shirt. You know it's what I mean? Great, like, and I'm not just saying that because, like, if you had a shirt that that sucked, I wouldn't mention it. Yeah. But this is a fantastic. No, we we got these really soft shirts like on purpose um, that that are awesome. 
awesome, awesome. So, um, okay, so I'm going to spin through the book, and you're just going to tell me to stop, and then we're going to have, it. there's going to be a life's big question that I'm okay. going to ask you, and then we're going to do a fire round of that three times. Okay, okay go. Let's do it. So, does your family see the real you? Huh. They see a, a, a version of the real me, not the whole thing, because there is a there is a dirty dirty side to me. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, just things that I wouldn't want. You know, isn't it weird that sometimes you feel like you can be more vulnerable on on like a YouTube to an audience that doesn't know you versus you know like talking to your family about it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a strange thing, but that. They definitely see the real me. Like I don't have like multiple. Like I'm not like when I go home, I'm not like getting out of this chair and going to like salsa dancing. Yeah, yeah, totally. But totally. there are, you know, I have different uh, with my with my grandparents. I, I I'm sweeter with them than I am with like you know other people. You know, cause they, like I I want them to to always know that I'm doing well and that you know they. They grew up in a different time. Yeah. Where they don't use the same words that yeah, I yeah, normally totally. use. So. But it's all sides of, of who you are. Yeah. So I want to ask this question to you guys out there as well. Does your family see the real you? Um, answer in the comments below. Let us know what you think. I think it's an excellent question. Okay, let's do another one. Okay. Go. Why is music so powerful? Uh, music is powerful because. Um, it has the ability when you're listening to it. Um, every person can create their own story with a song, or be caught up in a moment with a piece of music. Where if you're if you're reading a book or something, you create your own version of a world, but it takes you out of this one while you're reading it. And music is something that there's a connection with the real world and a real moment that no other art form can do. Uh, and I think every every person has a connection to a song or a piece of music that is different than than everyone else's. Um, and you can tie songs to memories very easily. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's why. Yeah. Totally, totally. Why do you guys think music is so powerful? You should also comment letting us know that. My answer was the right one. Yeah, Zach's, Zach, Zach's answer was the right one. But I've always, you know, it's always cool to, to see what people have to say. It's cool to see that. other, you know, less articulate. Other opinions. It's always good to have other opinions. Um, do you have any more questions for you guys? We have just a couple more minutes. Um, this week, uh, I think we have an extra piece uh, going up tomorrow for Have a Little Faith on our Witches episode, which we posted last week, which if you haven't watched it, you should check it out. Um, we also have a new episode of Science of Love coming next week, a new episode of The Fatherhood Project, and uh, lots of other good stuff coming up you know, the next couple months. So it's yeah. awesome. And as always, thank you guys so much for supporting the show, supporting Soul Pancake. We definitely would not be here without you because we would just be talking to nobody in a po room with post-its yeah, on the wall. And, sometimes you know. it's just what it is anyway. Yeah, and that's very true. That's very true. Exactly. So we may be here without... We, we, may, we would, yeah. <laughs> that's a... That's but, a but, like, we, we probably would. Yeah. Maybe the two of us would. Yeah. But thank you for all of your awesome support. As always, it means so much to us to read all the support of the show. I mean, I think we both feel the same way, that it's just amazing to see the response. I mean, it's really, you guys have been really great. Yeah. And, and it's always uh, incredible when, when, when the normal internet comes up and is negative. There's always some salt pancake folks to, like, Level it out. Yeah. And like yeah. have really intelligent conversation and be very supportive yeah. about everything. So you guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. and you guys are awesome. What are you, you only do these once a month, right? So only once a month. I'll see them next month. I'll see them next month, you know? But you'll see, I mean, they'll see you. That's the media, you know. But, but it'll be like actually it'll, from the It'll past. be edited. Yeah. It'll be edited and, and refined. 
So much shorter. Yeah. So we'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you'll see Zach tomorrow on Soul Pancake. You guys have an amazing Wednesday. Like, go. Yeah, have an awesome have a, have week. Have a fantastic Wednesday. And don't, a fantastic let anybody, Wednesday. don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Exactly. You can, even if you had a horrible Wednesday up to this point, you could still turn this Wednesday around. Definitely. Definitely. And you know what the one way to do that is? No! You should get bubbles. She's been looking for some excuse to use these bubbles and just found it at the very end. There you go. There you go. Zach, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Great hour. That's all. Awesome. Guys.